the primary purpose of the summer preview course is to help prepare students who are going to be taking an AP course at their high school to provide them with an overview of the history so that they can better understand it and give them a leg up on the content that they're going to be covering in their course at high school. It's a lot of content, and there are many students who don't have a strong background or they haven't had an interaction with world history other than maybe point by point or particular regions or time periods. They may not have had a chance to study or understand history from a global perspective and from a broad time period perspective. So in my experience, many students don't understand some fundamental concepts about world history or even history study in general. And uh, the main goal will be providing a basis of understanding how society and civilization have developed in the world since the Renaissance in Europe uh, around 1400. So we're going to be starting there, but we'll also be providing some broader context for movements in human society as well. Our main focus will be starting with the Columbian Exchange at, in, for, in the late 1400s, but I will also provide broad context going back to the beginning of civilization according to uh, agricultural society and what used to be the world history curriculum and now it's the modern curriculum. I'm still going to provide some important context so that broader concepts can be well understood. And then we'll be focusing quickly on the starting with the Renaissance, going through to the 20th century and ending with the second half of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, covering the unit guides, the units that are in the AP curriculum. I will also be using the Persia GT method that I use in all of my courses to help students understand how different threads and trends within different fields of human society interact with one another. So that's politics, economics, religion, society, ideology, and art will be kind of tracking uh, geography and technology as well. Uh, we'll be tracking how those different aspects of culture and humanity interact with one another and influence one another and overlap. But in summary, the primary goal is to give students a firm foundation to build their knowledge when they go into their AP course that they'll start in school in the fall. And of course, we will also be going over the essay component and I'll be providing information and assistance and guidelines for students to construct good AP essays for the test later. Uh, most courses don't start teaching the essay writing. Uh, most high schools I've found don't start teaching the essay writing until the second semester, but I will help give students some assistance, at least for like writing uh, for assignments uh, and how to construct good paragraphs and good responses and use evidence and things like that so that it can assist with their homework assignments in those cases as well. As I mentioned before, just to reiterate, to answer the question directly, we're going to start with a broad coverage in the first class we'll start with a broad coverage of the development of civilization around the world since the modern ap curriculum doesn't cover ancient history anymore uh, we won't spend too long on that but like i said there are some concepts that are necessary to understanding how society develops in the modern era so we'll start with a broad coverage of the trends of human civilization and development in that time period that'll be the first thing that we cover once that's set down and some certain concepts are laid in, then we'll talk, we'll start with the Columbian Exchange and we'll start with Columbus's voyage to the New World and what the circumstances were before the modern era, because the modern era is usually said to start with the Columbian Exchange. And so the curriculum for AP starts with the Mongol invasions and the Ming Dynasty and this transition from the medieval era into the modern or Renaissance era, the early modern or Renaissance era. And we'll talk about how the, this modern era is different from the medieval era that came before it. Uh, and so we'll set that scene and then we'll move forward from there. How the change from the medieval feudal system goes into the more modern commerce-based, commerce-driven society that we live in today, how that was formed around the beginning of the Renaissance. And then we'll make sure to cover uh, so that every time period, every unit period will be covered and we'll have a different narrative, a different focus, an explanation of how each unit connects from one unit to the next. Unit one, for example, is basically context for leading into the, how that transition happens. And then unit two is the age of exploration and the connection of the 
new world and the old world. And so we'll tell those stories and look at them through the lens of Persia GT, which is also reflected in the curriculum, not by the same name, but we'll be looking at politics, economics, religion, society, ideology, art, technology, and geography, and how all of those change over time. And specifically how the Persia GT components fit within each unit. The importance of Persia GT comes from the fact that History is practically infinite in its complexity. So in any given topic or any given time period or any given region or any given culture, you're dealing with millions of people and millions of moments and millions of different possible combinations of stories and ways to understand what's happened. So what Persia GT does is allows us to focus on specific aspects of it, of a particular culture, of all those things that I mentioned, we can focus on simply the politics, for example, of the Colombian exchange, the economics of the Colombian exchange, the religious components of the Colombian exchange. In all of those cases, we suddenly have a more clear narrative, a more clear story that we can understand and learn more, and then we can use it more effectively to discuss it in homework and for using it for homework and for discussing it and for taking in new information. So if we understand the way that religion works in a particular time period, then we can make logical inferences about how that might relate to what we understand about the politics of that time period and make logical inferences about how that might relate to the economics that we understand about that time period. And so by mastering Persia GT, you can develop your toolbox for making arguments and understanding how everything works together. I try to help students understand this by showing how they relate and how they're different. So politics, economics, religion, society, they're all very closely related to one another. And actually, the further you go back in history, they become almost one and the same thing. If you go back to ancient Sumeria, politics, economics, religion, society, all those things are actually practically the same phenomenon. But as you move forward, they get more and more complex and they get more and more separate from one another. But if you understand where those developed from, what human needs they're meant to fulfill, how our, our social organizations and just our human interactions create these, create these phenomena such as economics or politics or society, differences in social class like that. Once you understand the fundamentals of how those work, then everything becomes a lot more clear. And then once you understand how, quote unquote, politics works, power politics, or you understand how economics works just in terms of economic theory or why people have religion, once you have a better grasp of these things as actual phenomenon, like why do people have religion? Once you understand why people have religion, then when religion is brought up in any particular historical context, then your ability to absorb that information and your ability to apply that to other fields becomes much more facile. Instead of just saying like Protestant Reformation, you actually understand why a group of people might want to break away from a particular church or might want to found their own faith instead of just regurgitating information that in the early 1500s, there was a guy who was named Martin Luther and he did this thing, but you don't know why that's important or who cares. Simply put, in order to understand Persia GT, I try to impart philosophical understanding of why politics, economics, religion are important as concepts. And then from there, we use that knowledge of the philosophical and contextual importance of these fields to put in hard information that will now make more sense as a part of the story. For the writing side, um, I'll often ask comprehension questions and students will be, will learn how to make good topic sentences and use evidence correctly to make perfect paragraphs. Perfect paragraph being a topic sentence, evidence and analysis of that evidence. And so we'll master that skill for, to help with homework in the actual class that they'll take in high school. For homework, students are going to need to read the, we're going to provide the textbook PDF and students will be taking notes within the textbook PDF and watching videos that I'll choose based on certain topics. Uh, and in response, they're going to build a timeline that will reflect the different units. So each unit will have a Persia GT timeline within it so that the important political, economic, et cetera, components, the, the movement within the unit 
will be reflected in the timeline. And so the writing assignment, the homework assignment will be reading some material and then taking notes in the form of building the timeline, including collecting maps and images that reflect phenomenon and events in those time periods. Thank you, everybody. As always, it's a pleasure to speak with you all. I look forward to working with you. Have a good one. Stay safe and healthy. 